Someone was born an artist, and I was born a bandit. These are the words of the ex-boss of the well-known group Comasina, which sowed fear in and around Milan in the 70s. The words of Renato Valenzaschi, a complex and controversial character, an undeniably charming romantic gangster. Born in the main city of Lombardy on March 4, 1950, although the inventors from the journalistic environment who love various effects indicate a different, more romantic date. February 14, although this is not so. Already in the second half of the 60s he was a respected leader of a youth gang in Milan Comasina. The money capital acquired through thefts and robberies allows Renato to live with his girlfriend in a luxurious house in a prestigious area of the city. Already in 1970, Comasina is well known throughout Lombardy, thanks to hundreds of crimes committed here. In that era, Renato was a 20-year-old youth of a very pleasant appearance. Nevertheless, he already had experience of communicating with the Italian law enforcement system. Already at the age of eight, he became the protagonist of a not very pleasant episode. Then, guided by human compassion, he secretly made his way into the circus menagerie and freed two tigers, causing great damage to an already impoverished institution. A little later, the violent nature of Valenzasca again brought him to a state institution, this time straight to the dock. Several months in juvenile prison cost him a couple of rude words addressed to the local police commissioner. The clouds finally gathered over Belle Renee, beautiful Renee that is. On Valentine's Day, February 14, 1972, when he was arrested just 10 days after the robbery of the supermarket. As reported, Renato is a big fan of theatrical moves. During searched his house, he took off his gold Rolex watch, put it on the table and announced to the commander of the police team, let me get out of here and this watch is yours. But the foreman of the Carabinieri was animate and Valenzasco went to the places of detention. He will spend a long four and a half years in prison, during this time. His ex-girlfriend gave birth to his son. Valenzasca is involved in several prison riots, but his main goal is to escape. During the entire time of his imprisonment, the gangster made five unsuccessful attempts to escape. Each fight, every failed escape, every disobedience to the authorities cost Renato another transfer. In four and a half years, he thus visited 36 correctional prisons in different parts of the country. Finding no other way to leave the dungeons, beautiful Renate, with the help of urine injections, Later it was also said about infected blood, infects himself with hepatitis and ends up in a prison hospital bed. On July 28, 1976, together with two more criminals, with the assistance of bribed carabinieri, Renato Valenzasca safely leaves the prison walls. For some time, about two weeks, the gangster, along with his accomplices, hides in the Lombard forests, earning food by robbing grocery stores. But soon, with the help of former comrades from the Comasina gang, he flees to the south of the country, towards the cradle of the Mafia, Sicily. The bloody trail left behind by beautiful Renne is impressive. First, the murder of a policeman near the road checkpoint in Montecatini. Then, on November 13, in Andrea, a bloody expropriation of a municipal bank follows, the victims of which are three carabinieri. Tired of the robberies, Valenzasca soon decides to resort to a different method of obtaining funds. On December 13, 1976, Together with two accomplices, he kidnaps the daughter of a well-known Milanese businessman Emanuela Trapani, who was released on January 22 of the following year after paying 1 billion lire by relatives. But the transfer of money was the first step to failure. Both accomplices of beautiful Rene were expelled by the police. Hiding from retribution, Valenzasca flees to Rome, where for some time he receives asylum from his neo-fascist friend, commandant of the New Order political movement Pier Luigi Concutelli. At the Dalmine checkpoint, realizing that he was recognized, Valenzasca tries to flee, but receives two bullets, both in the thigh. Nevertheless, shooting back on the move, Renato, jumping into the car, rushes away, leaving behind the bodies of two killed policemen on the pavement. Tired and exhausted, a few days later, on February 12, he was accidentally arrested by a police squad in a Roman safe house on Forage Street together with his friend Concutelli. In fact, it was him and not Valenzasca, who came to take the police. This time he is in prison for a long time. Now his name is not just a symbol of crime. The image of Renato Valenzaschi is the heroic image of a bold romantic bandit, a man who pursues adventure, easily transgressing the law. This is exactly what the fantasy of the simple Italian people made him, who, as everyone knows, loves to sing very much honest gangsters and noble mafiosi and it is not surprising that soon his name appeared in the title of the film directed by Mario Bianchi The Valenzaschi Gang, 1977, where the already heroized image of handsome Rene is sung.
Just three years after the last arrest, the name of Renato Valenzaski is again on the front pages of newspapers and on the front pages of television news. On April 28, 1980, in a Milan transit prison, ten prisoners, led by the restless beautiful Renate, somehow took possession of three pistols, which, until now until now unknown, are taken hostage by the foreman of the prison guard, covering themselves with a hostage. The rebels go beyond the walls of the correctional facility, and immediately get involved in an angry shootout with the police squad passing by. Having seized a civilian minibus, the rebels are trying to escape, but half of the Milan police are already on their tail, was again captured by his accomplices and transferred to a special regime of imprisonment, that is, to an indefinite punishment cell. On March 20, 1981, during his stay in the Navarra prison in Milan, Renato Valenzasco was again, as they say, on horseback. During the rising prison uprising, during which several prisoners were killed, handsome Rene kills a young man Massimo Loin, allegedly a police informant, with a knife. Moreover, the rage that took possession of the rebels reached the point that while kicking on an already dead body, the head of the corpse actually separated. Young guys, after such a bloodthirsty incident that excited the entire Italian public, the doors of a particularly tough prison were cordially open for Renato and he spends the next five years in conditions as close as possible to concentration camps. During this time, he was falsely accused of killing two priests and a certain doctor. After the story of the severed head, the Italian public easily believed in such bloodthirstiness of Renato, and only in 1985 it turned out that he had nothing to do with these monstrous crimes. Priests and the doctor was killed by two Italian neo-Nazi degenerates who called themselves the group Ludwig, who thus fought the Judeo-Christian plague. July 18, 1987 ex boss Comasina, what do you think? Runs away from custody again. Despite the development of fullness, Valenzasca hides through the porthole from the Flaminia ferry, on which, under the vigilant supervision of the police, he is transferred to the softer Asinara prison. The five carabinieri who accompanied the bandit shrug their shoulders and tragically report that probably we put him in the wrong cabin, and handsome Renate, on foot, constantly hiding from the police, overcomes the distance from Genoa to Milan and already here goes straight to the office of People's Radio where he gives a sensational interview in which he refutes the accusations that it was he who cut off the head of a young man during the uprising in Navarra in March 1981, and also threatens those who poured mountains of shit on him in connection with the accusations of killing priests. After that, the gangster disappears. He shaves off his famous mustache, bleaches his hair, and with a fake passport, he settles in a boarding house in the town of Oliana, where he is known as a friendly and cheerful person. On August 7th, his car was stopped at a checkpoint near Trieste. Renato is armed again, but this time he does not offer any resistance. Valenzasca again found himself on the prison bunk. By that time, his wife Giuliana Brezza had already filed for divorce, but this did not undermine Renato's spirit. His goal is freedom and he must achieve this goal at all costs. On December 31, 1995, beautiful Rene again makes an attempt to escape from the Nuoro prison in Lombardy but this time the case went wrong and he was again detained without even having time to leave the building of the correctional institution. While in prison, Renato is said to collect brides, he receives hundreds of letters from women from all over Italy, one of whom was later accused of helping Renato in his last escape attempt. By 1998, Renato Valenzaschi had four life sentences on his conscience plus 260 years in prison, which he was sentenced to for seven murders, four of which he committed with his own hands. In 2003, he was placed in the Valgara High Security Prison as a special supervised element. He has at his disposal a cell of 3 by 4 meters, a TV, and a refrigerator. Simple and Spartan. Nevertheless, in 2006, with the help of 600 euros, prison mother Renato, he managed to purchase a personal computer, and the very next year handsome Renee was able to negotiate a monthly connection with the prison administration and now, on those rare days when he goes online, readers can enjoy the personal blog of the famous gangster www.renadovalenzasca.com. Today he is 60 years old, 36 of which he spent in prison, since 1972. This is a record among Italian prisoners, even those who were sentenced to life terms, because Italian law was very liberal, and after 25 years in prison, the convict has the right to demand a milder regime, the so-called semi-freedom, when you can stay outside the prison walls during the day and return only at night. For these 36 years, he only saw his elderly mother twice. The prison administration does not consider it necessary to allow relatives to Renato, although he allows weekly phone calls. He saw his son Maxim only once, when he was only three years old. The former wife, 
despite the fact, who still has a love for the gangster, does not want to tell his adult child that his father is the inveterate convict Renato Valenzasca. The world has changed. There is no more respect. There is no more sense of honor and dignity. When I was abandoned, harsh laws of honor reigned among us. You know, Omerta, Vendetta. But each of us had our own code. For example, I never I shot first and did not leave my comrades who could not hide. Now this is not the case. I see it. If I went out tomorrow and started working again, I, e, engaging in banditry, those whom I consider friends would hand me over to the police within a maximum of three days. The world has become one big problem.